easiest way to get to the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge is to take the train to the tiny town of Randa. To get to the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge Trail, follow the signs from Randa's train station through the tiny town. There will be many signs along the way that will point you in the correct direction. During the walk, be sure to stop and take in the spectacular views. The walk through Randa is almost completely uphill, and you will likely need to stop a couple times to rest. As I continued my walk through the tiny town, I almost felt a little bit awkward as I was literally walking right past people's homes and almost through their backyards. All of the people though were very friendly and many even pointed me in the right direction. And after about 20 minutes of walking, I arrived at the turnoff point for the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge Trail. After a brief moment taking in the view of how far I'd walked, I followed the signs and began a pretty substantial uphill hike featuring a series of switchbacks. The hike to the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge can really be broken down into three sections. After turning on to the Suspension Bridge Trail in Randa, the first section is that series of switchbacks and just kind of a slow incline that will eventually take you to a fork in the road. This fork in the road will pass over a paved path and it was at this point where I was a little bit confused on which direction to turn. It wasn't until I looked at the opposite end of the sign that I was able to see that the suspension bridge trail would continue past the porta potty and up this hill. This is the beginning of the second part of the Charles Conan suspension bridge trail and definitely the most difficult part. Here is some commentary from my first break. My first break on the hike so far. It's not terrible. It's just pretty much straight up, but it's not so bad that like I can't manage it. It's just slow and I have to stop and rest quite often. So here's where I'm stopped. I don't know if you'll be able to make out the train station, but I'm definitely up a ways. I'm gonna look at my map and see how much further uh, I think maybe I'm a quarter of the way. So at this point I was definitely huffing and puffing. There's not a lot of footage of this part of the hike because my GoPro was picking up a lot of glares from the sun. This section of the trail was definitely a steeper incline. There were more rocks in the way. I had to make a lot more stops to rest, but it was great because there were lots of stunning views and I was able to really stop and appreciate the views. Here's some commentary from my second break. Second stop here on a bench which was strategically placed. It's a beautiful view. I'm sure I'll make it. It's just, I gotta go pretty slow. I'm more of a downhill flat ground type of guy, less of an incline. So as I continued the second part of the hike, I literally would have to make a goal, like I'll walk to this rock or I'll walk to this tree. And by the time I got to the end of the second section, that rock and that tree were literally about 10 feet away. Uh, that's how many breaks I needed. Now, thankfully, the third section was much flatter. So at this point, I was probably about 90 minutes or so into my hike. I'm not a particularly strong hiker, so for somebody that's a novice like me, I would say this was probably one of the most difficult hikes I've ever been on. The trails are pretty well marked, but I did download the All Trails app, and I did have a map of the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge Trail with me. I definitely wish I would have brought hiking poles with on this hike. I was able to find a wooden walking stick along the way, but it wasn't the same. So this third part of the trail is definitely the longest. I think it was well over a mile, but as you can see from the videos, the terrain was much flatter than the other two parts of the trail. And I was able to walk quite a bit faster, and you'll notice I also didn't have to take very many breaks. And I was amazed with how much elevation I gained when I stopped to check out the view. So I kept walking and walking on this flat ground and I kept thinking to myself, where's the suspension bridge? It's got to be coming up soon. While the trail is very well marked, I must say the signs are not accurate at all. At one point it said the bridge was five minutes away and then about ten minutes later I saw another sign that said the bridge was ten minutes away. So definitely the signs will point you in the right direction but I wouldn't trust their times. 
I didn't realize how much more video I shot during the third section of the trail. The sun was in a much better location and I wasn't getting that glare on my GoPro. Uh, I will point out that there's no place to get any water on this trail, so you'll want to bring at least a liter with. I believe I brought two liters with and had about maybe a quarter liter left when I finished my hike. So there's this kind of false summit area here where I was just sure the bridge was around these rocks. And it turns out that it's still probably another quarter mile or so. And here's another sign that's going to say that the bridge is 10 minutes away. The previous sign had said the bridge was only five minutes away, so don't trust the signs. Just a little bit more walking here. It's relatively flat, and just around this bend, I'll finally come up on the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge. It took about two and a half hours or so to reach the bridge, and I was very tired when I got here, but I was also very excited. Here comes the bridge, it's just around this corner, and it literally comes out of nowhere. So there's the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge. I've made it, and it's now time to walk across it. I'm not typically someone that's scared of heights, but I probably should have been terrified walking across this bridge. But I was so happy to be here, and I was so exhausted from my hike up that I really didn't have time to be scared. As I walked across the bridge, I did come across a couple people. I'll talk about squeezing by them in a moment, but one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I did was that I stopped and I actually appreciated the views, because it can be so easy when you're walking across the bridge to be focused on this bridge that's the third longest in the world, that you don't realize how amazing the views are. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, I don't necessarily know if you want to watch 15 minutes straight of me walking across the bridge, so we're at eight times speed here. Sorry, it's a little bit bouncy. The bridge was bouncing up and down. The view you're gonna see here in just a moment is looking opposite of Randa, looking up towards the Bernese Alps. We'll speed it up again. This is kind of in the middle of the bridge. The bridge does have a decline to begin and then an incline at the end, and it was actually quite hard to walk up that incline. So here we're still at eight times speed. So in just a minute, I'll stop my GoPro in the middle of the suspension bridge and take a quick video of Randa and Randa train station. And then this is the first time I actually looked down. And yeah, I was a little frightened, I'm not going to lie. So here I'm trying to take kind of a selfie video and suddenly it's rush hour on the bridge with people coming from both directions. So as we speed this up to eight times, I'll just tell you that when you have to pass somebody on the bridge, you will literally have to press your stomach against one side of the bridge and they will press their stomach against the other side of the bridge and you're barely able to squeeze by. You'll notice that this section of the video gets kind of choppy. This is because it was the incline section of the bridge and it's quite a substantial uphill walk. So the end of the bridge here is in sight. And I did it. I successfully walked across the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge. The best views of the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge are from the opposite side. So after taking in those views, I decided to retrace my steps as the second half of the Suspension Bridge Trail Loop is quite a bit more steep than the initial part. So I simply retraced my steps knowing that it's going to mostly be downhill and I was pretty tired at this point, so I didn't take a lot of footage, but I was kind of surprised at how difficult the trek back down to Randa was. It definitely did a number on my calves as I was constantly having to use my legs to make sure that uh, I didn't fall down the inclines. The walk back took around 90 minutes or so. It was almost dark by the time I got to Randa Station. And I was thrilled when the paved road came into sight because I knew that the hardest part of the hike had now been completed. From the paved road, there's quite a bit of decline and then there's a series of switchbacks, but it would only be a few more minutes and I would be at Randa Station. Here Randa comes into view and I'm feeling pretty good. I got a kind of a bolt of energy at this point. And then all I had to do was retrace my steps through the tiny town of Randa and arrive at Randa Station, 
jump on the train, and that would be it. I had planned on stopping filming here, but uh, I really enjoyed walking through Randa and viewing the quaintness of this little tiny town that definitely looked very, very Swiss. So I did take out my GoPro and I did shoot some more footage here. Uh, the lighting wasn't very good, so I apologize. It does look a little bit fuzzy at times. So here we are back at the train station. I made it. It was hard, but it was definitely worth it. Once at Randa Station, I had about 20 minutes before my train. I would be going all the way to Zurich that evening, and the train ride was about three and a half hours, which gave me plenty of time to upload and edit my photos and videos. So I hope you enjoyed my trek to the Charles Conan Suspension Bridge. It was definitely one of the more difficult hikes that I've ever done, but it was definitely worth it. And if I can do it as a novice hiker, you can too. Thank you.